Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my ultimate Deluke guide. Today, we are finally going to talk about Deluke, a long awaited video where I will be covering everything you need to know about Deluke, his best builds, weapons, teams, playstyles, advanced tips, rotation information, and so much more. I'm going to give you guys all of my Deluke knowledge in this video so that you can play and build Deluke efficiently because Deluke is a five star standard character who a lot of people have and who has gotten significantly better in recent patches. New supports, weapons, and even artifact sets that he can use have made Deluke really fun and a lot better. And so today we are going to talk about that. The Deluke guide is finally here and this took a long time. So I hope you enjoy. If you do, feel free to leave a like as it helps me out. Before we begin, as always, I want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. And with that being said, let's talk about Deluke. All right, so starting things off, what does Deluke actually do? Well, Deluke is a pyro on field DPS whose abilities are fairly straightforward. His elemental skill has three casts. You can use it consecutively three times. And each time you use it, it'll do a forward slash of pyro damage. These hits have no internal cooldown on their pyro application, meaning you can apply pyro and vaporize or melt each hit, increasing its damage and also being able to space out your skill. As well, this ability has a 10 second cooldown. Each cast of your skill has around a four second window where you can use it before it goes on cooldown. What this means in practice is that you can weave in normal attacks in between your skill casts, dash around or do whatever in between each of them to space them out and effectively make it to where your skill has no cooldown. An example of this would be using your skill, weaving in some pyro infused normals which you'll get through your burst then using another skill then some normals and then another skill and you can actually animation cancel some of your hits by pressing your skill at the right time for deluxe elemental burst this one will fire a phoenix in front of him this ability has a pretty large scaling and will knock enemies back sort of in the direction the phoenix is going and enemies that are especially light and non-boss enemies for the most part can get displaced by this quite a lot so you want to be mindful of your positioning when you use it this ability has a pretty large aoe of pyro damage a 12 second cooldown and a 40 energy cost and it will also infuse your attacks with pyro which is extremely important for a main dps this allows the luke to be played on field with all of his normal attacks or even plunge attacks to be infused with pyro allowing him to weave in normal attacks between his skill casts or even spam pyro plunges with shan yun it is also worth noting that you'll have 100 percent uptime on your pyro duration this is because it will last for 12 seconds with your ascension 4 passive that will give you 20 percent pyro damage bonus after using your burst and make this pyro duration last for a total of 12 seconds on an ability that has a 12 second cooldown this paired with his decently high skilling and actually the highest plunge attack skilling in the game, high plunge that is, outside of Shao when you factor in his burst, enables a pretty solid pyro hyper carry roll when played correctly because of the fact that he can apply so much pyro and increases damage pretty significantly when you proc reactions such as vaporize or melt, but more on that later. Lastly, Deluke's other passive talent is completely useless because you're not charge attacking on him for the most part, so I don't know why this is in the game, but your charge attack costs less stamina. Before moving on to some more advanced information, for the most part in standard teams, normal attack and skill are pretty comparable in strength as they both are very important to level and contribute significantly to your damage. With that in mind, in Shen Yun teams where you're trying to spam your plunges as much as possible, I would recommend prioritizing your normal attacks first. But outside of that, normal attack and skill are both similar in strength and very important. And your burst is also worth leveling to increase your burst damage by quite a bit. So overall, don't neglect his talents with normal and skill being the priority. Now, moving on, I want to talk about what changed with Deluke, why he's gotten so much better and cover what changed and some of his new play styles and teams. First of all, it's important to understand that Deluke in his standard vaporized team is a pretty decent carry but gets a lot stronger with certain key upgrades like especially Shan Yun. Because Deluke's plunge attack is so strong and it is the highest scaling in the game, having a character who can enable you to consistently plunge and vaporize all of your plunges, multiplying your damage by pairing him with a Hydro support is absolutely insane and enables a brand new playstyle. While without Shan Yun, you can do a tech known as Dragon Strike where you can still manage to plunge but it's really hard to do and I don't want to get into it, Shan Yun makes this not only effortless but also significantly better because she buffs your plunge attack damage, gives you crit rate, and also and especially can run the Verdes and Venera set to reduce the resistance of enemies, skyrocketing your pyro and hydro damage as well if you manage to swirl both, while also enabling your playstyle in the first place by allowing you to jump super high inside of her burst. Now, while I don't want this video to be entirely centered around Shen Yun, because Deluke, as I said, has really strong supports, even more recently, Farina, who is another buff to Deluke, in my opinion, a really good character with him, and even someone like Bennett, who's a great pyro healer and often your go-to healer with Deluke for the insane amount of attack, power resonance, Noblesse Oblige or Instructor set and healing that he gives you. Having so many new supports as well as new builds like artifact sets and weapons that we'll cover gave Deluke not only more versatility but also made him stronger. While he is a standard carry and in his base teams without the most impressive supports, Deluke is still viable but not game breaking. But if you have some of these key upgrades, he becomes much better. When I played him in his quote-unquote premium team with Farina and Shan Yun, I kind of fell back in love with Deluke 
Luke, kind of how I felt playing him in 1.0 many years ago. This is because of how much damage his plunge is doing and how he literally can obliterate content if played correctly in his new best teams. As I said though, this guide will cover everything and virtually every playstyle and team for Deluke. So while I want to cover what's new and what made him better, I will also cover the standard stuff in case that's how you want to play him to help make your Deluke as strong as possible, regardless of what your account looks like. Moving on, let's talk about Deluke's playstyle and some advanced tips you need to know. First of all, Deluke, like many other pyro carries, is played with amplifying reactions, generally speaking, like Vaporize or Melt, to maximize his damage. While Vaporize is the standard for pyro carries, given how pyro and hydro interact with one another, Melt teams also can be quite powerful if played correctly, although they are a bit more difficult to pilot. Deluke can also be ran in mono pyro teams or some weird dendro teams, but I will go into more detail on that in the team comp section later in the video. For now, you just need to know that Deluke is typically your on-field pyro carry, who you will try to buff as much as possible through your off-field supports, enabling powerful reactions such as Vaporize or Melt or whatever you're going for. Outside of just that, Deluke is also a character who has some things to consider when you're using him. First of all, regarding his elemental skill, as I mentioned earlier, you want to be weaving in normal attacks in between each cast if played in a standard team. You can space out your skills, allow it to effectively feel like it has no cooldown, weave in pyro-infused normal attacks in between each skill while also animation canceling your normals, allowing you to get more hits in and have a smoother rotation, and then when your normal attack infusion wears off or after you spend enough time on field with him, you will swap out and restart your rotation. Your typical rotation will involve using your support characters first, then swapping into Deluke, using his burst so that his attacks are infused with pyro, and then a mixture of your skill and normal attacks. You can also press your skill right before bursting, but these are just small things that depend on the situation. If you're playing Deluke with Shen Yun, instead of doing this sort of normal attack E, normal attack E rotation, you will actually be spamming your high plunges as often as possible to deal immense amounts of damage buffed by Shen Yun that you will oftentimes vape or melt depending on your team. Do note that as I mentioned in my Shen Yun guide, you can dash cancel your plunge attacks to make them a lot faster than if you were to not dash cancel. As you can see from background footage, that isn't perfect, but I'm just trying to do it as best I can. The difference between dash canceling your plunges and not dash canceling them is pretty huge. In a team comp like this, however, I've noticed that it feels bad to use my skill because my plunges are doing so much damage and my skill does nothing in comparison because the scaling, as you can see, is like 160% or 170 at level 10 versus 442 on top of Shen Yun's plunge buffs. It kind of feels like a waste sometimes, but it's still worth using to get your energy back. I just typically recommend using your skill at the end of your rotation after all of your buffs are leaving. For example, your Bennett Field, Shen Yun ult, and maybe even Farina's buffs are expiring. Then you can weave in your skill near the end of their uptime to not lose out on the energy or damage. Although using your skill at the end of your rotation does change your build a little, notably having anti-synergy with the Crimson Witch set, but more on that when we talk about artifacts. Additionally, you can also weave in your skill in between your plunges in this team. Although personally, I just prefer using it at the end to not lose any buff uptime or make my rotation feel clunky. Additionally, something you should know with the Luke is that his elemental burst, as I said earlier, can knock back enemies. While this won't knock back boss enemies, it can knock back a lot of the things you're fighting, even enemies such as Geovish apps. And while this can be nice for clumping or grouping up enemies, it can also be very annoying if it pushes them outside of your Bennett circle or if it just makes you have to chase after enemies. Because of this, I typically recommend thinking before using your burst and trying to position yourself to where the enemies are either grouped or maybe pushed against a wall or just being mindful of where the enemies will end up so that you're not caught off guard after using your burst. Keep in mind that if you're playing support characters such as Sing Cho or Yulon that require your Deluke to normal attack, this will be another reason to weave in normal attacks between basically everything, every skill press, or even plunge attacks if you're playing Shen Yun to make sure you're actually applying hydro and vaporizing your pyro hits. For a bit more advanced tips regarding how to double swirl both pyro and hydro in vaporized Deluke teams and get a bit more out of your rotations, since I'm traveling at the moment, I got Suggest27 to help record and explain this part for me, and he did a great job, so shout out to him, and I'll let him take the wheel from here. If you're running an animal unit, you can try to get a swirl so that you pro VV and increase your damage, and if you're really feeling spicy, you can even try to get a double swirl. Double swirl is when you swirl both pyro and the other element that you have on your team, generally either hydro or cryo for Deluxe teams. And it's generally easier to do in vape teams and in melt teams. The basic idea behind it is you apply one element and then you have an off-field source of a different element, and then you swap to your animal unit, swirl the first element, get the other element, and swirl that one too. Let's take a look at an example double swirl setup using a Deluke team with Farina, Shanyun, and Bennett. Farina's E hits at specific intervals that honestly feel a bit random if you're just playing her, but for the sake of doing setups are actually consistent. It's always the same intervals. Because of that, you're going to want to be able to time your abilities in a way where you can remove the Hydro Aura and then apply a Pyro Aura and have time to swap to your animal unit and swirl it before it goes away. Now that can be a little bit difficult, so pay close attention. You 
start with Farina's E and then Q, and then swap to Bennett and use either his E or his Burst, it doesn't matter which one you use first, and then the other one. And then immediately swap to your animal unit, and if it's Xianyun, use your normal attack. If it's another animal unit, use whatever ability they have. And then in Xianyun's case, then you can follow that up with EQ. If your timing is right, you're going to end up swirling Pyro on your normal attack, and then swirling Hydro on your Burst. That being said, a setup like this is pretty ping dependent because the timing is really tight. If you have higher ping or you don't trust yourself to reliably do the setup, you can either try after Rena's Q, one swapping to Bennett to do his burst and then a hold E, or you can try if you have C6 to after using his skill and his burst, wait until Farina applies Hydro and triggers Vaporize, and then weave in one Bennett Pyro infused normal attack to reapply the Pyro. This setup is a lot less tight on timing and is generally the one that I would recommend if you have Bennett C6. You can even go one step further and use Xianyun's burst earlier into your rotation so that you end up with more uptime on your Bennett buff on your Duluth. All that being said though, double swirling is good, but it's not always necessary and there's a lot of situations where it's either very difficult to do, like in AoE situations, or inconsistent because you have to dodge and that is obviously going to mess with your timing. So just keep in mind, if you struggle to get your double swirls, it's really not the end of the world. One swirl is better than none. There's also some examples of teams that just don't really have good double swirl setups, and there's even teams that don't have good pyro swirl setups at all, such as Deluke, Tianyun, Farina, and then either Singso or Yulon. That's a team where because you don't have a source of pyro application other than Deluke himself, and you want to swap to Deluke when you're ready to do your damage, it's generally completely fine to just ignore the pyro swirl altogether. All right, now with all that out of the way, let's talk about how you actually want to build your Deluke. Well, first of all, since this game came out, the Crimson Witch of Flames has been the set sort of designed for Deluke. This is the set that will be your general go-to as Deluke's staple set. It gives you 15% power damage bonus on the two-piece, and then a four-piece set that will increase how much power damage bonus you gain after you use your skill, stacking up to three times, while also increasing your pyro reaction damage for overload, burning, burgeon, and especially vaporize and melt, which is going to be very relevant in most of your teams. Because of this, you'll get a total of 37.5% bonus pyro damage on top of increasing your reaction damage, for example, 15% damage bonus for your vaporize and melt, making it just a ton of stats overall, and as I said, your go-to set for Deluke. Now, with that in mind, there are sets that are very similar in strength and sometimes even better. First of all, the Marais Chaussée Hunter set is great if you pair Deluke with Farina. This is because your HP will be constantly decreasing with Farina's elemental skill, and then you will gain 36% crit rate for free, as well as some normal and charge attack damage. This set is very similar in strength to Crimson Witch of Flames, and the situations when it can be better is notably if you're playing him with Shan Yun and using your skill at the end of your rotation. This is something I covered in the last section, but if you're not starting your Deluxe rotation with your skill and you're using it later after you plunge spam with Shan Yun, for example, then you won't fully make use of the Crimson Witch of Flames four piece effect. In those situations, Marie Chaussée will be better and your go to with Farina and Shan Yun being a strong alternative with just Farina, but Crimson Witch of Flames is still your general go to set in almost every other situation. It's also worth noting that if you are proccing elemental reactions such as Vaporize and Melt, which you typically will be doing, the Gilded Dreams four piece is also a very competitive option with the other sets I mentioned. This is a strong alternative that you may already have farmed, as it will give you a ton of elemental mastery and also attack based on the elemental types of your party members. You can typically expect around 180 elemental mastery and 14% attack from this set if you're running Deluke with Bennett and then two non-pyro characters, which is a lot of stats, and as I said, a strong and viable four-piece alternative, usually only slightly worse than Crimson Witch or Marais Chaussée, being stronger the less EM you have and the more you need it. Other viable sets include Lava Walker for Mono Pyro, mix and matching 2B sets based on substats, but generally, to summarize, Crimson Witch of Flames is what most Deluke mains will pick up as their best set if you are proccing reactions, which you should be doing to maximize your damage, and you won't have to think further than that. With that in mind, with Farina, Marie Chaussée is very similar in strength, and in his optimal team with Shen Yu in there, if you are plunging and using your skill at the end of your rotation, as I mentioned, then Crimson Witch loses some value, and sets like Marie Chaussée Hunter with Farina or Gilded Dreams become better and your strongest options. Now, regarding the stats you want on Deluke, this is very straightforward as he is built like a standard traditional hyper carry. For Deluke, the main stats you're looking for are the following. Crit rate and crit damage on basically every piece to maximize your damage, followed by attack percent and elemental mastery if you're triggering reactions. Regarding energy recharge, Deluke is a character who typically does not need much because his burst only has a 40 energy cost and you are using your skill quite a lot and staying on field. With that in mind, if you aren't running Bennett, another pyro character with him, and are struggling to get your burst, you can need a bit of energy recharge, like 120 to 140. Sometimes you may need less than that, sometimes you may need a bit more, so do check out what works for you, but typically, while you absolutely want to be using your burst 
on cooldown with Daluk, you don't need that much ER to do so, assuming you are playing or building your team properly. With that in mind, to go into more detail on how you're going to be building your Daluk, for the main stats, this is what you're looking for. First of all, for your sands, both attack percent or elemental mastery are viable. Attack percent is sort of the general standard option that will always increase your damage regardless of if you're proccing reactions or not, but in a lot of his optimal teams, elemental mastery can actually be better. This is notably going to be if you're triggering valuable reactions and, for example, vaporizing a large source of your damage, which you typically will be doing in Deluke's recommended teams. Furthermore, the difference between attack percent and elemental mastery will depend on the stats you have and also the team comp you're running. If you have many sources of attack percent, like Bennett, the Power Resonance, the Noblesse set, or even an attack percent weapon like Wolf's Gravestone or Tidal Shadow, then elemental mastery can be quite a bit more important for you. Additionally, with a character like Shen Yun, who will benefit more from your Deluke having elemental mastery than having attack percent because of the way her buffs work, well, an EM Sans can oftentimes be better in those teams where you're triggering reactions and make it the go-to option. With an EM weapon though, or if you have less attack buffs, like if you're not running Bennett, then an attack percent Sans can be better, and overall, both are very strong options that have situations where they can be better, with attack percent being the generalistic option that's always good, and EM being my recommended option if you are playing him in an optimal team where you're vaporizing or melting. I hope the nuance made sense, and generally for most players, you can choose your sands based on your substats and whichever stat you need more of. Moving on for your other main stats, I highly recommend getting a pyro damage bonus goblet and a crit rate or crit damage circlet, both of which being viable depending on which one you need more of to help balance your crit ratio, aiming for a 1 to 2 of crit rate to crit damage. Alright, now moving on, let's talk about the Luke's best weapons for every type of player. First of all, before we begin, I want to give some general important guidelines. First of all, weapons that have high crit rate or crit damage are very valuable on Deluke because not only is that a premier stat for most carries, but also in Deluke's case, he can make up for a low base attack weapon because most of his teams will have Bennett, who gives a huge amount of attack percent through his ultimate, the Pyro Resonance, and potentially the Noblesse Oblige set. Additionally, outside of just Bennett, if you're running Shan Yun with Deluke, because of the reasons I mentioned earlier, she scales a lot better with damage percent stats like crit rate, crit damage, or even elemental mastery than she does with your Deluke's attack, which makes that stat even less valuable on him. It's still a good stat, don't get me wrong, but it's what usually will make crit or EM claymores a bit better overall. Additionally, as far as EM is concerned, with basically everything and every character, if you aren't proccing reactions and decide to play Deluke in a mono pyro team or something, then you don't have to worry about elemental mastery, and it goes from being a really good stat to a bad one, but generally you are proccing reactions such as Vaporize, especially where elemental mastery is very valuable. This section will include a weapon ranking, and note that how good each weapon is will vary quite a bit based on your team, but with that in mind, let's actually talk about all of the weapons and which ones you should choose and how good each of them are. First of all, Deluke's best 5-star weapons overall are typically going to be Redhorn Stone Thresher and Beacon of the Reed Sea for your crit options. Redhorn Stone Thresher is great because it just gives you 88 crit damage, which is a huge amount, as well as giving you a bit of bonus damage to your normal attacks. This weapon has a low base attack, which again, you can make up for with someone like Bennett, making it a really strong crit stat stick. Regarding Beacon of the Reed Sea, this is another amazing option overall, which provides you with a lot of crit rate and up to 40% attack on its effect if you use your skill and take damage. Both of these claymores are great 5-star options and pretty similar in strength. Wolf's Gravestone is also an amazing attack percent stat stick, and while attack percent can be a bit less valuable in certain situations, as I mentioned, it's still giving you so many stats that it's a great claymore overall. A decently high base attack with 69% attack total from its stat line and its effect, on top of having an additional attack percent buff to your entire team when you get opponents low, this is a inconsistent passive but a strong one, is a nice bonus, being a solid 5-star stat stick. Keep in mind that with a weapon that gives you a ton of attack percent, like Wolf's Gravestone or Unforged, which is also viable as a stat stick, going for an Elemental Mastery Sands will typically be even more recommended because of how much attack percent you're gaining. I feel like Wolves gets a lot of unfair hate because while it oftentimes isn't your absolute best in slot, for a standard Claymore, it's still really good on Deluke with its exact performance depending on your team and substats. This attack buff can also be more or less relevant in your team, however, as buffing someone like Synchro's attack is really nice, but buffing someone who scales on HP like Yelan or Farina won't be as nice, it won't really do anything. So keep that in mind, I still like this weapon because it looks good on Deluke, and it is still a good choice, as you'll see in the weapon ranking, but it typically isn't the number one best choice, even though it's technically Deluke's signature or the weapon he's usually portrayed with. Other good 5-star weapons include Verdict for a lot of stats. With that in mind, there are a few 4-star options that are incredibly powerful and potentially even better than a lot of the 5-stars. Serpent Spine is one of the best weapons in the game, especially with refinements, giving you a lot of crit rate and up to 30% damage through its passive at R1 or 50% at R5. You can fully stack these passives by just waiting before starting your Abyss Chamber or whatever content you're doing, and while yes, sometimes you can lose a few stacks, for the most part, you can have these up consistently and get a huge amount 
amount of free damage. This is not only one of your best four star options, but also one of your best options overall, sometimes even being best in slot, depending on the situation. It's so much damage percent and crit rate that are really valuable on Deluc. Additionally, Rain Slasher is another amazing option that is also one of your best, even compared to five stars. This is mainly true in Vaporized teams, however, because it gives you a lot of elemental mastery and an effect that will increase your damage by 20 to 40%, depending on your refinement level, against opponents affected by Hydro or Electro. Because of this, in a Vaporized team where the enemies are constantly affected with Hydro, Rain Slasher gives you so many stats that make it a really strong option as a stat stick overall, and even more so with Shen Yun because of how important damage percent and elemental mastery is. Regarding other good 4-star options, Mac Hyra gives you a lot of EM and attack as well. Talking Stick is an okay stat stick. There's a lot of stats here, but it isn't as good as Serpent Spine, so I don't recommend choosing it in your battle pass. Lithic Claymore can give you attack and crit rate if you have characters from Liyue, which is fine. But outside of that, there's also really good free to play options that I want to mention. The first one is the Mailed Flowers, a weapon that will actually perform pretty similarly to Rain Slasher, depending on refinement rank, that we got for free in an event not too long ago. If you have this weapon, you get a lot of attack and elemental mastery, which is a great stat stick for Deluke. Once again, if you are vaporizing or melting, you get over 200 elemental mastery from its stat line and effect, as well as 24% attack and a very high base attack for a four star. This weapon is a great stat stick, again, comparable to Rain Slasher and a great free to play choice overall. Outside of that, you can also use Tidal Shadow for a huge amount of attack, being good, especially if you either don't need EM or don't have the Mailed Flower event weapon. Outside of that, you can also use the Tuna Claymore or Blackliff or Archaic as other free to play options. The new Melusine Claymore is fine too, but typically you don't need the ER on Deluke. Generally though, I think Deluke has great five star options, but also really good four star options like Serpent Spine, Rain Slasher, or Mailed Flowers, and even Tidal Shadows, which are good free to play options, making him a very accessible carry, at least weapon wise. To give you guys a rough idea of how good each weapon performs, here are some weapon rankings for different teams that can help illustrate this. Keep in mind that this will vary heavily based on your rotations, stats, and there's a lot of assumptions that go into these. So take these as a general ranking and not an exact one to help give you guys an idea of how good each weapon can be for your Deluke. I do also want to add that if you're running Serpent Spine, your stacks may not be at five. You might have like three if you take damage. And also you may over cap on crit rate if you're running the Marie Chaussée set and a crit rate weapon. So keep all these things in mind when you consider your weapon choices. Moving on for Deluke's constellations, they're pretty nice, but not the best. This is more relevant with Deluke than a lot of other characters because he's a standard banner five star, which means you might accidentally get him just by pulling for any limited character of your choice. With that in mind, what do his constellations actually do? Well, first of all, Deluke C1 will give him 15% damage bonus to enemies above 50% HP. So that's nice. It's more damage against high health enemies. Deluke C2 will give him attack and attack speed, scaling up as you take damage. This will be 10 to 30% attack and 5 to 15% attack speed. This is nice if you take damage, but it isn't really worth just standing still and getting beaten up to get these bonuses. You will typically be able to trigger it past passively though as you're fighting, which is really nice. Also keep in mind that this effect can trigger through shields as your shield takes damage even if your deluxe HP isn't going down. This makes this constellation synergize very well with a shield and also this constellation does have negative synergy with a weapon like Serpent Spine where you want to be avoiding taking damage if you want to take damage without losing stacks or actually taking any damage. Generally though, bonus attack and attack speed makes C2 pretty nice, but nothing game breaking. Moving on, deluxe C3 and 5 increase his talent levels, which is pretty good, and then C4 is an interesting one. This one will give your skill more damage if you use it in a rhythm two seconds after casting the last skill. This effectively will mean that your second and third skills will be buffed if you use the previous one, attack or wait for two seconds, and then use your skill again in that sort of rhythm. With that in mind, through the math that has been done, it does not seem like this constellation is worth playing around. If you get the damage bonus, it's nice, it's a bonus, but it's not insane to where you shouldn't be changing your combos or doing anything suboptimal just to make your C4 work. If you're doing something like plunging with Shen Yun and skilling in between them and the timing works out and that's cool. But typically my Shen Yun rotation will use your skill three times at the end, unless you're running Crimson Witch where you can skill in between your plunges. And for a normal attacking standard Deluke, you will typically be doing the combo of two normals in between each skill cast, which is more optimal. Whereas in order to proc this C4, you would have to do three normals in between each skill cast. Keep that in mind if it's something you want to do, but typically it's not recommended to do so and will be useless a lot of the time. Lastly, for Deluxe C6, this is a pretty decent constellation that will give him attack speed for two normal attacks after using his skill, while also making your normal attack combo persist after using your skill. Typically with Deluke, if you do two normals and then a skill and then another two normals, you will be doing your first two normals and then you will skill and then your combo will reset back to one and two. With this constellation, however, you can do two normals, a skill cast, and then two normals 
that will be faster, but actually contributing to your normal attack combo. So instead of restarting your combo at one and then two, you can actually finish it and do three, four, allowing you to get full normal attack combos, even if you are using your skill in between your combo. Overall, Deluxe Constellations aren't the best, but they're not terrible either. C1 and 2 are pretty nice. It's a bit more damage with effectively half uptime, some attack speed and attack, and then his C6 can also be good for a stronger and faster combo. With that in mind, nothing I'm saying in this video really is Constellation dependent, and everything stands for a C0 Deluke. My Deluke would be C0, but I activated C2 like three years ago before I really made videos, in case you're wondering why my Deluke Constellations are activated, and most of my other standard characters like Jean doesn't have hers activated. All right, now moving on, before we talk about Deluke's best teams and characters that he synergizes with, let's talk about what reaction you should choose and talk about the age-old vaporize or melt question. Now, as I mentioned throughout the video, I highly encourage running powerful reactions to increase your Deluke's personal damage. While you can play him in something like a mono pyro team, typically going for vaporize is the standard. Now, regarding melt and the differences between vaporize and melt, you should understand that both vape and melt are situationally good, vaporize is more consistent, whereas the melt reaction is a higher number. It can make your damage higher, but won't be as recommended for most players, even though it can still be a strong option. In fact, I think both Vape and Melt are viable, but Vaporize is typically going to be more consistent and the stronger option overall for most players. The reason for this is because of how the reactions work. Not to get too deep into elemental gauge theory, but the basics you need to understand are that when you proc a Melt reaction on Deluke using Pyro on Cryo, it will be a strong sided reaction, also called Forward Melt, whereas if you use Pyro on Hydro and Vaporize on Deluke, this will be a weak sided reaction, reverse Vaporize, because of how these reactions work. And so while Vaporize is a 1.5 times multiplier and Melt is a 2 times multiplier, which means you will get more damage per Melt, typically you can Vaporize a lot more consistently and more often than you can Melt. You'll even notice that if you apply Cryo on a support character, swap to Deluke, and then trigger Melt, it will remove the Cryo or on enemies, whereas if you apply Hydro with a support like Sing Cho, for example, swap to Deluke and then Vaporize it immediately, the Hydro Aura won't necessarily be consumed immediately, allowing you to vaporize and then vaporize again, effectively getting more reactions out of less elemental application from your supports. Additionally, it's also worth understanding that Hydro supports in general are not just very strong characters like Sing Cho, Yalan, and Farina are really, really powerful, but also can apply a ton of Hydro. If someone like Sing Cho, for example, applies so much Hydro that you can vaporize very consistently and easily and will apply Hydro at a much faster rate than your standard Cryo support will apply Cryo. For all those reasons, Vaporize has been the standard for a lot of Pyro carries and Deluke is no exception. With that in mind, that's not to say that Melt is bad, as I think it is very relevant for speedrunning or if you just want to maximize your Deluke damage or enjoy the playstyle. There are some teams that work very well, you can use support characters like Kaya or Rosaria and while one of them alone won't be enough to sustain your melting, like certain solo Hydro supports can keep up with Deluke and allow him to Vaporize consistently, you can run multiple Cryo characters or run one alongside, for example, a Cryo infused Kaza a burst that can allow your Deluke to vape much more consistently, and I have seen some absolutely crazy Deluke speedruns in a Melt team, especially from this one YouTuber who plays Deluke, shout out to him, he'll be credited in the description because I feel like he inspired me, and so it's definitely a viable and fun playstyle, one that scales with investment but that isn't as recommended for the average player because while it can be powerful, it isn't as consistent or as meta as Vaporize, generally speaking. With that in mind, Deluke has a lot of teams and a lot of playstyles that are viable and so I will do my best at covering them all in this section, whether you want to play a Vaporize Deluke, a Melt Deluke, Mono Pyro, or even Burgeon, all of which can work if you build a proper team and know what you're doing. All right, now with that out of the way, let's actually talk about Deluke's best teams and best synergies for Deluke in different playstyles. First of all, let's talk about the characters that he synergizes with. So as I'm sure you know by now, Deluke's premium hyper carry team, his most meta team comp that has elevated him to new heights, in my opinion, is this one right here, paired with Farina, Shan Yun, and Bennett. Now there are variations to this team. You can run double Hydro, you can do a lot of things, but what I want you to understand is the general formula of this team. It's not necessary to have Farina, to have Shen Yun, and Bennett, but what you need to understand is why this team comp works so that you can build a similar one potentially for you. In order to vaporize, Deluke is paired with a powerful off-field Hydro support. This is going to be either Sing Cho for the most Hydro application, and he's just a solid 4-star, Yalan for slightly less Hydro app, but still enough, while also having good personal and team damage, or even Farina, who doesn't have quite as much Hydro application as the other two, but it oftentimes can be enough on top of having good personal damage and a huge team buff thanks to her fanfare and HP draining mechanic. Outside of that team slot, you're typically going to be running a healer. This can be a multitude of healers. The standard is Bennett for a huge amount of attack, one of Deluke's best synergies, on top of giving you the pyro resonance, the 
less or instructor set and just a lot of healing, making him a solid choice overall. Shan Yun, who can swirl both Pyro and Hydro in your team, allow your Diluc to plunge, which will skyrocket his damage and make him way better than without her. Or alternatives like Jean, Zhongli as a shielder if you don't need healing, Baiju if you want some Dendro, a Hydro healer for a bit more Hydro, or Diona for some shields, healing, and also the occasional melt through a bit of cryo application and 200 elemental mastery with her C6. With that in mind, I'm mentioning a lot of options to give you guys some flexibility, but I'll show you example teams to help illustrate what I mean. While the premier team comp looks like this, with Freena as your solo off-field hydro, which is enough to catch up with Deluxe plunging if you're timing it right, his more standard and old school team comps typically run Yisingcho or Yalan as your hydro. Farina is a newer character that really does buff his damage. Farina is an insane support in my opinion, but even without her, you can make a solid team. Examples of these teams, a four-star variation is Singcho, Bennett, and Sucrose. Very standard, you're going to be swirling Pyro, Hydro as well if you can, vaporizing all your damage on Deluke, and buffing it with Bennett and Sucrose. You can also run double Hydro teams with Singcho, Yalan, or Farina. You can literally pick two of the three and then run a flexible last slot, typically a healer like Shen Yun, Jean, or Bennett, but most of the options I mentioned earlier can work. If you have Shen Yun here, as I said, you can make sure to plunge on Deluke, which will do much more than your normal attacks given how high the scaling is and Shen Yun's buffs. And also the Bird Essence Venerer set, which I think makes an Anima support almost invaluable in a lot of Deluke teams. As you'll see, even in teams without Shen Yun, you're typically running a character like Sucrose, Kazuha, or even Jean to buff your damage through the set, as well as having other useful parts of their kit, like grouping or EM buffs with Sucrose, elemental damage buffs with Kazuha, or healing with Jean. Speaking of healing, Shen Yun also has the benefit of being a healer, which is huge. And the fact that I forgot to mention that kind of shows how strong she is outside of just being a really good healer, replacing the need for another healer in your team, even if you're running someone like Farina. With that in mind, the reason you see Bennett a lot of the times with Shen Yun as well is because he's such a strong buffer that even without his healing, he is such a solid character. Keep in mind that if you're playing Farina, you want to make sure your healer is good to actually stack up your fanfare stacks efficiently. So an AoE team-wide healer is recommended, but Bennett can still work provided you're building him well, giving him a decent amount of healing substats so that you can heal all of your party members in the second you spend on them and then overheal when you're on your Deluke. You can also consider running the Song of Days Pass set if Bennett is solo healing with Farina. I do want to reiterate that Farina on her own is a solid character with Deluke, even if you don't have Shen Yun, and the same can be said with Shen Yun. As long as you're following the sort of team structure that I showed you guys of Deluke, a strong Hydro support, and then two flex options, usually a solid healer, and oftentimes an Anemo support to swirl Pyro and ideally Hydro as well if you can, will be optimal for Deluke a lot of the times. For more team examples, here are the sort of meta Shen Yun teams. You can also play Kazuha with Farina if you don't have Shen Yun, and in this team, interestingly enough, you can either swirl Hydro with your Kazuha's burst, infuse it with Hydro, and making sure to swirl Pyro with your skill as well, and enable your Deluke to vaporize a huge majority of his damage. Or if you happen to infuse your Kazuha's burst with Pyro, while this won't be recommended for your Deluke's damage, it can be fine for your team damage as you will allow your Farina to vape, and Farina's still a really solid character. So depending on what your Kazuha infuses, this team will change drastically, but being a solid one overall. Sucrose or even Venti can work here, although infusing their burst can be a little bit more inconsistent, especially with Sucrose. Regarding vape teams though, as I said, the flex slot is very flexible. You can even do an electro character if you want to get the additional electro charge procs. You can even run a geo support like Zhongli, Albedo, or Chiori, or you can run double hydro, which is something that a lot of pyro characters can do, and you will get good success here with a flexible healer, as you can really do so much with this team. For melt team comps, it is a similar concept, but you want to be running a cryo support, but typically more than one cryo applier. Just an off-field Rosaria or Kaya or Ganyu's burst won't be enough to consistently melt on your Deluke, and it will usually end up being your cryo character melting. With that in mind, if you have another cryo applier, either a second source of cryo application, which can be another cryo unit, or a lot of the times an Anemo character who infuses their burst with cryo, notably Kazuha, you can melt a lot more consistently if you know what you're doing and don't accidentally apply too much pyro, with an example rotation being shown now where you just make sure to infuse your Kazuha's burst with cryo, swirling that cryo, having your off-field support give you additional cryo application, and then melting under Deluke. In a team comp like this, you can also use Diona as another source of cryo if you want. She gives you elemental mastery, a bit more cryo, you can definitely use her as your healer here, and I think she works just fine. Your generic cryo option though will typically be as your like main source of off-field cryo, Kaya or Rosaria as the go-to options. Rosaria gets better with C2, Kaya gets better with C6, but even just in general, both of them are very strong and can be good sources of off-field cryo application. Regarding someone like Ganyu, her burst can be nice in AoE when paired with someone like Venti, but for the most part, 
it won't apply as much cryo as consistently as the other cryo supports that I mentioned, so keep that in mind. Regarding some other reactions, to kind of circle back to vaporize, because everything's always about vaporize, if you want to do some burgeon stuff, you can. I've been trying to make retro burgeon work, as I call it. Get it? Because retribution, the Luke says that when he ults and then burgeon. But I've noticed that if I play a dendro applier that's too fast, like Nahida, there's a decent chance that I accidentally start burning, mess up the reaction, and then once the enemy is burning, it's kind of hard to fix the rotation, even if I apply a bit more hydro. So I think there's still some experimentation to be done with Virgin teams. There's optimization that can be done, but I personally really like running double hydro with Baiju. I know it's nothing special. You're vaporizing. It's a double hydro team. Obviously, it's going to be good, but I actually do value not only Baiju's strong healing for someone like Farina to help stack her up, but also you kind of get a free Virgin anytime your Baiju applies Dendro from off field, which is a nice, decent source of extra damage that will scale on your EM. As I said, though, I do think there's a lot of possibilities as far as a Diluc Virgin team goes. Just make sure you have enough Hydro application through your supports, and then bonus Dendro can be nice. Future Zox here. I did want to say that if you want to experiment with burning or burn vape teams, or you're burning and vaporizing, you can run Diluc with Farina and Nahida, two Archons, two broken supports, and in a team like this, oftentimes your Farina might be vaporizing, but as I said, she's so strong that it's fine. With a last thought of a Pyro, a Nemo, or Hydro character, making for a more unique team comp that can work, although it's not my favorite. Lastly, you can play Diluc in a Mono Pyro team with Bennett, and then flexible supports. Kazo's obviously the best here for a huge amount of Pyro damage bonus, and another Pyro support like Shangling or off-field Pyro carry, I guess, is a better way to describe Shangling. Having Shangling and Diluc both benefit greatly from the buffs that your Bennett and Kazo will give them. Overall, there really are many possibilities for Diluc and his teams, and a lot of them are viable. If you want to play Melt, you want to play Mono Pyro, Virgin, whatever you can. But my general recommendation will always be Vaporize for most players as your standard choice. I do also want to reiterate that his best team and the reason I'm making this video, why I think he's so insane right now, is with Shan Yun, Farina, and then usually Bennett, but you can also do some double hydro things with Yalan. I think these team comps are insane, very satisfying, and very powerful. I think Diluc got an upgrade with just Farina and also with just Shan Yun. So both of them are huge upgrades, and then together it makes an insane team as well that I really like, really think is powerful. Without it, I think Diluc's still a strong unit. I think he's gotten better, and I think Farina helps even if you don't have Shan Yun. So feel free to use your Diluc and build him with even four star supports, like in this team that I showed here, or certain upgrades like double Hydro with Yalan or Farina, whatever. I think those team comps work very well. But if you have his premier team, I think he will perform even better and become as close to meta as he's been since like 1.0 when the game was still being discovered. And I personally have found Diluc to be extremely fun and very powerful once again when paired in his optimal team. I'm sorry this section was so long. There was so much to cover, but I don't think I want to trim any of it. If this guide ends up being really long, well, at least I can say that I made it with as much information as I could. But I'm going to stop my rambling here. And now we're going to get into a showcase, one of the more anticipated sections, showing you guys my Diluc in action. Now, regarding my showcase, while well, I'll show you my build in a second, I want to point out that throughout the video, my build changed between two things, either Redhorn Stone Thresher with Marie Chausse or Serpent Spine with Crimson Witch of Flames, which is what I was using for some of the footage I recorded with like Sing Cho and stuff. Whereas with Farina, I swapped to Marie Chausse just for consistency's sake, because with Farina Shen Yun, I don't really like using my skill on Diluc at the start of my rotation. So Crimson Witch isn't as valuable. And so the build I was running is this one that I'm about to cut to, a four-piece Marie Chausse Hunter with an R1 Redhorn Stone Thresher, a five-star weapon, but obviously there's good four stars too. Our Marie Chausse set is pretty standard. We're just stacking crit damage, 10, 9, 8 talents. And while I usually do C0 showcases, or I try to, since the Luke's a standard character, when I first started playing before I actually made many videos, I did actually activate my first two constellations. So I can't really help it. My Deluke is C2, which just gives me a bit more attack speed and a little bit more damage against healthy enemies. So cool thing you should keep in mind. I wish I could deactivate them for this showcase, but it's not the biggest of deals. And my investment is really good because I do like Deluke. So 310 elemental mastery. The attack looks really low, but I promise you with Bennett, Pyro Resonance, Noblesse Oblige, and also Shan Yun who benefits from other buffs, it's not bad. While also having a really high crit investment, inflated by our weapon, of course, but almost 300 crit damage. And this is over 90 crit rate when you factor in the 36 bonus we get from Marie Chausse. So definitely a build that makes my crit value higher with Redhorn and Marie Chausse. But anyways, a good build. Let's get into the showcase of Diluc in my favorite team in the current abyss, which was annoying to reset. So I hope you enjoy the gameplay. Let's go.
And so yeah, the Duluth Guide finally came out. Before you click off though, I really want to know what you guys think about this video. Outside of just the Duluth Guide memes, I feel like I tried to give my all and talk about everything I know about Duluth. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot more I could have rambled on in like the team section. There's so many characters to talk about. There's so much in the game now that I don't want to make my videos too long, but I also want to give as much detail as I can. So I hope that's appreciated. But I mean, be honest, like let me know what you guys think. Are the videos too long? Do you appreciate the length? I mean, there's timestamps and stuff, but I hope it was good. If there's anything I want to add because there's a lot to Diluc. He's an old character. There's a lot that's been discovered, tested, all that. It will be in a pinned comment if anything changes or if there's any modifications I want to make. With that in mind, I really like him. I think Diluc has always been one of my favorite characters, but I don't know why I delayed the Diluc guide for so long. I did record one like two years ago, but then I said I would wait for Dendro and then Dendro came out and then I was like, okay, I'll wait for Nahida. Then I wanted to wait for like Farina and then Shen Yu and I, I don't know what happened, but it's here now. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. I don't want to make this outro too long. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the depth and the effort that was put in. Like the video if you want, subscribe if you're new. I appreciate it. It means a lot. And with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.